virtual coastal classroom. Today, we are talking all about sea turtle nesting. So giving you a little bit of a nesting 101. Today, I have my partner with me, Brody. He's going to kind of help us out in, while we're talking about nesting, the steps that a female sea turtle might go through when they're nesting, and some of the other kind of quick facts that we see here in South Florida. Thank you guys for tuning in today. As you all know, we are currently closed to the public, so we're not seeing these constant visitors coming in, checking out our patients and learning more about us. If you do have the ability to donate, we do always appreciate that. You can always click the link below or go on to our website, marinelife.org backslash donate in order to help us out during this time. We're also having a really cool type of contest right now. If you go onto our Facebook page, you might see a little bit more information about it. But if you donate $5, you can actually get a chance to name one of our sea turtle patients, which is really, really exciting. A lot of times those patients get named by our staff or maybe even donors or things along those lines. So if you did want to do that, you can always check in on our Facebook page for more information about that. But as we're going to go ahead and get started today talking about nesting. So sea turtle nesting here in South Florida has actually already started. We've had a pretty busy, se busy season so far with our nesting. It starts in the very beginning of March. So March 1st to October 31st is the entirety of our nesting season here in South Florida. Now obviously that varies around the world. So we regulate in South Florida during those months. That's when we're doing a lot of our monitoring of our beaches. Now sea turtles don't really have a calendar. So although we consider our nesting season to be March 1st to October 31st, sea turtles can come up and nest whenever. They don't have that calendar to check. So we had nest early in South Florida. North of us, we had some nest early in February. And when we look at sea turtle nesters, here in South Florida, we actually have three species that nest here on our beaches. So the first one we have is our leatherback sea turtle. So this is one of the nesting species that we have here in South Florida. They're the first to come up and nest on our beaches. They normally nest in March to about June or July. So they have about a two to three month span of nesting. And then you also have to consider their hatching season as well. The next mamas that are gonna come up onto our beaches are our loggerhead sea turtles. So they start to come up and nest around April and can go into the September months to nest and lay their eggs here. And then our last ones that we have here are our green sea turtles. So they tend to nest in June and go until the end of the nesting season to October. But again, these can always vary. Turtles don't can't tell time, don't know what day it is, or even month, so they can obviously nest before or even after those kind of suggested periods that we have. So when it comes to nesting, how exactly does this nesting process happen? There are what we consider about seven steps that a sea turtle, female, a female sea turtle takes when she comes up and nests. The very first one is going to be arriving. So she comes up onto our beaches here in South Florida. Each of the three species of sea turtle has different types of tracks that allow us to identify them. So when they're coming and crawling up onto our beach, they use their flippers to kind of move their body forward. And again, each species has a different type of track that we can tell. So if we look at, let's say our leatherbacks, the largest of all species, they use their flippers in almost what we call like a breaststroke motion. So they use two flippers at the same time to pull their body forward. Greens do the same thing, except greens have a distinct, normally tail mark in between their tracks. And then our loggerheads like to crawl in almost a freestyle fashion. So they do one flipper in front of the other to pull their body forward. Females can be very particular when it comes to their nesting beaches. So they can come up and not like the sand or the smell or something might spook them and they can return back to the ocean. So this arrival process can happen once or it can happen multiple times. But once a female has found a, a nice kind of sandy area that they think is going to be perfect for their nest, 
they'll do something called body pitting. So when they're body pitting, what they're doing is they're using their rear and their front flippers to move sand out of the way to make this pit. Now, characteristics of these pits can obviously differ between species as it does for a lot of things. So for example, our green sea turtles, they make a very large pit. They tend to make almost a crater. If you guys have ever been out on the beach during the summer months, you might see these very big divots in the sand, and those are most likely from green sea turtles. Other species like our loggerhead sea turtles, their body pits aren't as deep, and that, again, just all depends on the species. Once they've body pitted and everything is still fine, what they'll end up doing is they'll start to construct their nest. So this is the process where the female sea turtle is starting to dig an egg chamber. So what they'll do is they use their back flippers almost as hands, right? So they have very similar hand, like finger bones in their flippers and they can scoop their, the sand out of the bottom of that sand, the pit that they're digging, their egg chamber, and they use that to start making that, that where they can deposit their eggs. So they end up reaching as far as their back flippers can reach and they make it very wide at the bottom of the egg chamber and kind of narrow off. If you almost think of like the shape of a light bulb, right? Light bulbs are very narrow as you kind of the part that you have to twist in and then round her towards the end. So they continue to dig this egg chamber and they'll start to, once they've reached a, a depth that is low enough for them that they can't reach anymore, they'll actually start to deposit their eggs. So that's gonna be that next step. And this can vary. They can deposit one to four eggs at a time. An average nesting clutch is about 80 to 120 eggs. Now, what does that word clutch mean? So clutch is normally referred to the amount of eggs that is deposited at one time or laid at one time by animals like birds, reptiles, and amphibians. So since sea turtles fall under that reptile category, they're kind of the amount of eggs that they lay is considered a clutch. So they'll lay these eggs and then after they've decided that they've laid as many eggs as they can, they'll start to bury their eggs. So the eggs will end up using, uh, they'll be down at the bottom of the egg chamber and they'll use those rear flippers again to compact that sand. So again, using that scooping motion from their rear flippers, they'll go ahead and place the sand back over the eggs that they've just laid and make it so that it's cushioned um, and that it's protected. So they use that same sand that they just dug out to go ahead and cover their eggs. After they've covered those eggs, they'll go into something called camouflaging. Now, have you guys heard of that word before or even tuned in to one of our other virtual coastal classrooms? If you have, you know that camouflaging is uh, something that is either on an animal or they use to blend in with their surroundings. With sea turtle nest camouflaging, what the, a female does is she uses all four flippers, so her front and her rear, to throw sand everywhere. It can get pretty messy, and that sand that they're throwing around is light and fluffy, and it's used to cover up where that egg chamber is. So that way animals that might be predators to a sea turtle, so when you're thinking of raccoons, coyotes, uh, things along those lines, it has it's harder for those types of predators to find where the eggs actually are. So they'll camouflage, they'll throw this sand all around, and once they're done with that and feel that they, they, they've done a good job, they'll go back out into the ocean and make their return. After they return back into the ocean, they actually don't go far. Sea turtle, female sea turtles can lay two to about six nests, and that can always vary, within one nesting season. So they'll wait a week or so, come back onto the beach, and then lay another clutch of eggs after they've already laid that one clutch. So again, anywhere from 80 to 120 eggs within each egg chamber and then you're looking at two to six nests within a season. So they have to lay a lot of eggs 
in order for their hatchlings to be able to survive. Now here at Loggerhead, I did mention we do a lot of research here. We monitor our sea turtle nesting beaches here. We have one of the densest nesting beaches in the entire world for sea turtle nesting. So this picture right here shows you a little bit of what our researchers see the morning after. So they see this is a loggerhead nest and what they see are the tracks. So those tracks that I talked about a little bit earlier of the female coming up and they end up seeing that last stage, that camouflaging stage where all the sand is thrown around. Now our researchers are very well, um, they're very well trained to see where the egg chamber actually is because we do mark off our sea turtle nest. We end up marking a, a small percentage of our loggerhead and our green nest and we have to know where that egg chamber is so that way later we can go in and do what's called an excavation. So that way we can get more information about them. Now not every sea turtle that comes up onto our beaches actually lays a nest. I talked about that a little bit earlier in the arrival stage. If a sea turtle doesn't like that area or something scares them or something just feels off, they'll do something called a false crawl. So looking at this picture, this is a picture of a, a sea turtle, a mama that came up and just didn't like where it was going to nest. So it arrived onto the beach and kind of did a loop and went back out into the ocean and didn't lay their eggs. Now that's common to happen, especially with loggerhead sea turtles. They end up doing about a 50% false crawl ratio. So that means half the time that they come up onto the beach, they are likely to end up leaving the beach and not laying a nest. And that can be due to a lot of different factors. One of the biggest ones can be human interactions though. So if you are out walking on the beach and you see a female, they can see you before you see them and you can spook them because it can be really dark outside. So once those nests are laid, they have an incubation time. So the sea turtle, the female sea turtles never come back to check on those nests. Once the eggs are laid, the mom is done and she'll go back out into the ocean and continue to lay nests but those eggs are still in the nest and they take about 45 to 60 days to incubate or develop. And during that developing time, they're in this sand and temperature plays a really important role for the development of these eggs. So with that, that temperature, there's really a key kind of area where those temperatures have to lie within. So we like to say anywhere between 82 and 89 degrees is ideal for a sea turtle to develop in its egg. Anything lower than that or higher than that can cause for those eggs not to develop. If you think about developing an egg, you think of your chicken eggs at home, right? If we make scrambled eggs, we're cracking open the yolk inside. Well, if it is fertilized, that can develop into a chick. Or if we're talking about sea turtles, it can develop into a hatchling. With temperature, it also determines the sex of a hatchling. So going back to those ratios, we like to say that if it's hotter or warmer temperatures, we see more female hatchlings and cooler temperatures pr produce more male hatchlings. So my saying is always hot chicks, cool dudes. That's the easiest way to remember which way is which when it comes to what type of temperature determines if it's a male or a female. And if we look in my little display here, you can actually see kind of how the egg chamber is formed. So you definitely see the wider part down at the bottom and going up. This is actually a display of the emergence. So after that 45 to 60 days of the hatchling sitting and developing in their eggs, they end up at that time They'll start to crack open their egg. They'll use something called a kernuncle, and it's called their, and that's their egg tooth. So they'll use that to crack open their egg, and then they sit in that egg and internalize the yolk. It's almost like a packed lunch that their mom gave them. And that's what gives them the energy they need to go up into the sand and out into the ocean. So they internalize that egg yolk for about a day or two, maybe a little bit longer. Then they free themselves out of their eggshell 
and they'll start to flatten out. You have to think they've been stuck in this egg and developing in this egg, so they're almost kind of folded in half. So they do wait, again, another day or two until they're plastron. If you guys remember what a plastron is, it's the bottom part of a sea turtle shell. They'll wait till the plastron is completely flat, and then they all work together to start to emerge out of their nest. Now, it does, again, require temperature, right? I said temperature is very important. These cooler temperatures are what gives our turtles the cue to start to emerge out of their nest. So that's what you see in this display here. You see some of them are in their eggs down at the bottom, but a lot of them are starting to come up out of the nest. They all work together. That top layer can feel that sand temperature the fastest, right? Because they're up there at the top. And once they feel that the temperature is starting to cool down, they'll start to move and that causes every other hatchling that is ready to go to move up and start what's called a boil. And that's where you see kind of the sand starting to make little bubbles. And that's when the hatchlings are emerging and heading straight out into the sea where they're trying to get to the Sargasso Sea. So talking about all of that nesting, I gave you a lot of facts today for our nesting 101. There were a little bit of characteristics that we see with our nesting. Those greens, they definitely make those big body pits. Egg sizes, when we look at that, your greens and your loggerheads almost have the same sized egg. Their eggs are about the size of a ping pong ball. And then our leatherbacks, their eggs are about the size of a tangerine. And their nest can definitely a lot deeper than our greens and our loggerheads. And those all depend on the length of their back flippers. So there's definitely a lot of things our researchers have to look out for for nesting that when they're doing their surveys, either in the morning or even at night when we're out there nesting. So we definitely have to know all of this information and even more than that. This is kind of just the surface layer of our nesting kind of facts that we like to share with the public to make sure that they know. So what I'll go ahead and do, since I've given you a little bit of a 101, if you guys have any questions about nesting, feel free to go ahead and type them in now, or if you had any questions before, we'll try to get to them. Thanks, Casey. Um, some of our viewers would like to know if any of the sea turtle species return to their nest. Yeah, that's a great question. So when hatchlings emerge from their nest, um, they do... Uh, once they develop, so about 25 to 30 years later, if they're a female, they come back to just about the same area that they were hatched from. So absolutely, we see hatchlings that were hatched from our stretch of beach coming back to our beaches and laying eggs later. And same thing with those female sea turtles that are already laying eggs, right? We see, our research team sees, that we have reoccurring nesters. So female sea turtles that are constantly coming to our beaches. Casey, can you tell us um, the order of density of each sea turtle on, yeah. on our beaches? So our densest nesters that we have are our loggerheads. We are definitely a very dense beach with loggerhead sea turtles. Last year we had 1,300, I think, or 13,000 sea turtle, loggerhead sea turtle nests. So they're definitely our highest. Then our green sea turtles and then our leatherbacks. So that's kind of the order we go in. And then, um, just to confirm, Casey, our viewers would like to know if uh, the turtle ever returns to the nest once they lay the nest. Yeah, so once a female sea turtle lays her eggs, she will not come back to that nest. She won't check on it or do anything like that. They have a little bit of a different parenting style than we do, or maybe other types of mammals do, right? We're known for taking care of our babies that we have. Uh, a female sea turtle doesn't come back to check in on the hatchlings that are there. She gives them everything that they need to survive when she lays those eggs. So it's in their genetic coding. They know exactly where they need to go, where, what they need to do, where their foraging grounds might be, and things along those lines. Thanks, Casey. Yeah. Um, is there ever an age at which sea turtles stop laying eggs? That's a great question. To my knowledge, there isn't, but there is an age that they need to be to lay eggs. We'll call that maturity, right? So in order to be sexually productive, they need to be about 25 to 30 years old, and that's just an average. That varies in between species. 
So for example, a leatherback sea turtle can actually reach sexual maturity at 10 to 15 years old. So it does depend on the species, but on average it has to be between 25 and 30. Thanks, Casey. And then um, our viewers would like to know if we record the success rate of the clutches. Yeah, that's a great question. So our morning team for our researchers, when they're out onto our beaches doing our kind of surveys, they mark off a certain number of nests. And that certain number of nests is the ones that they're going to actually be excavating. So making an inventory of. And they record all the information, the eggs that were laid, the eggs that didn't hatch, the eggs that hatched and things along those lines. And they put it in a database so that way we can do research projects on it. So absolutely. And then just one last question, yeah. Casey. Um, do we stake every nest that we uh, record? Or yeah. what's that process look like? So with our the three species that we have, our leatherbacks, our greens, and our loggerheads, with the leatherback, since we don't have as many nests, we mark every single one. Our greens and our loggerheads, since we have more of their nests, we only mark about 10 to 15% of the nests that are laid. But we do GPS coordinate every single nest and every single track that is laid on our beach. We just don't inventory every single one of them. Because if we did, our researchers would be out on the beach almost all day. <laughs> Thanks, Casey. Yeah, you're welcome. All right, well, thank you guys for tuning in. If you do have any other questions, feel free to keep submitting them in and we'll try to answer them.